Okay. <laughs> Today we're looking at hyperbola. Now you've heard this word before in English. And what did it mean? Exaggeration. All right. So every maths teacher also knows that you found out that it means exaggeration in English. It is the same word. This hyperboli means multiple hyperbola, and hyperbola is a graph. All right. Um, and exaggeration comes into our graph as well. So both of these reasons came from the Latin word, and the Latin word meant to exaggerate. All right. So. Our graph is exaggerated, the reason for it being in the English is an, an exaggeration as well. So this particular graph is not one that you've come across before, it's a newbie, all right? And it looks like these are the two formulas we're going to use for it. So we're going to have a look at this one first because it's the one that makes sense of the whole thing. And what it says is we are interested in any x's and y's that multiply to give something. Now when you were back at primary school and probably even at intermediate, quite often your teacher would have said, okay, you've got five minutes to write down all the things you can think of that multiply to give six. And you'd have sat there and you'd have gone for gold. Even though it was boring as heck, you still would have done it. what we're going to do is graph all of those things. So what two numbers multiply to give six? Two and three. Two and three. Yep, what else? One and six. One and six. Good. Anything else? Negative two and one. Oh, negative two and three. Negative two and negative, negative three. three. Good. More? Negative one and negative one. Okay, cool. More? Come on, you were all clever when you were little and you thought, oh, I also know oh. that three times two is six, right? Oh, oh yeah, you did do it. I know. Oh! oh it is zero. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll go with one, Emma. Okay, and so we've got two times three. And, and, then, and then you were getting really clever and you went, oh, but I know a half times six, right? So you went and did a half times 12, sorry, which is way up here something. And then somebody really clever said, oh, actually, a 10 times 60. And then you went and you got really ridiculous. Oh, somebody might have been really clever and gone one and a half times four, right? One and a half times four. Okay. All of those numbers, when we find every single one that is possibly capable of being that of the answer being six, form a curve. And it looks like this. And another one in the negative sphere. So that's all those answers to that question that you were given. Put on a graph. It's never ever going to touch this line because at this line, what is the y value? And when you multiply by something by zero, you get, so you can't get six, can you? All right. So it's going to get close, but never exactly to it. If we were trying to find a negative number, then we'd be using these two quadrants. Quadrants being a quarter of a graph. So this would be negative three times two is negative six. So if that had been negative six, I would have had my curve in that one and in this one. So what we need to be able to say though is that there is these two lines, the x-axis and the y-axis, that can't be touched. So we put dots on them or very close to them, right? And it has a special name, it's called an asymptote. Asymptote. All right, an asymptote. So that asymptote are lines that our graph is not allowed to touch. So that means we can't suddenly go down here and cross over and go up again because we made a mistake. Must not touch them. It's got a slope down 
It can't ever go up again because that means it's no longer a hyperbola. All right? So you've got to be very careful with your tails. You can't make it into a straight line. Lots of things don't have the same value. So you can't suddenly get to one and draw a straight line along one because there's only one thing that one times gives six, and that's six. So it's got to get off six after one. All right? So it's very important that you curve this graph. So we still want to have a point of interest to move our graph around. So this is our basic graph when k is 6. So k has changed its reasoning a little bit. But this point here, which in this case is the origin, is our point of interest. All right? And our point of interest is not the origin. It's where the asymptotes cross. All right? So, that's a plain ordinary one. If we go to this form here, x, y, if I divide that equation by x, what happens? What do I get? Right, I get y equals 6 over x. They're the same thing. y equals 6 over x, x, y equals 6. Can be written either way. Okay? But this one is not very easy to move. So we want it in this form, y equals, to translate around the place, up and across. That b is the same b we've been dealing with. What does b do? Moves it up and down, right? So it's still going to move it up and down. So if we've got y equals, let's do a negative, 3 over x minus 1. We draw this graph in parts. So we're going to start off with drawing it, drawing the basic y equals negative 3 over x. We're not going to actually draw it, we're just going to dot it. So I want all the things that multiply to give negative 3. Right, negative 1, 3, 1, negative 3, 1, negative 3, negative 1, 3. All right, so those dots would be on my graph if I wasn't translating it, but I have. I've picked the whole graph up and moved it up one, or I've moved the asymptote, which is currently sitting on the x and y axis, up one. So my asymptote is now going through here. This one didn't move because there was nothing in the bracket with x. All right, but we're not dealing with that one today. So we've moved it up. We're now going to pretend that the green dotty lines are the x and y axis. So where are the numbers that multiply to give negative 3? So now this one's moved up one. It's now up here. And this one is here. And this one is a 2. And this one is on our axis. All right. So now our graph looks like this. It does not touch the dotty lines. Okay? All right, so if we have to find the equation. What happens? got x and y axis, asymptote at negative 4. Do they always give you the asymptote? Oh, goodness, don't look at that. Mm -hmm. You put me off. I show, go again. Um, do they always give us the asymptote? No, sometimes you have to just see it. Sometimes you have to just look for where it is. going down towards, but not touching, that y-axis. All right. So in this graph, I've got the asymptote, which I can read off. So I know it's at negative 4. And I've got one point, and that's all I need. 
right? So what we got is our equation, y equals k over x plus v. What's v? Negative 5. 4. What is x and y? 0, 1 and 0. X is 1, y is 0. That's our point. So now we're going to find out what k is by using that information. y equals k over x minus 4. So therefore 0 equals k over 1 minus 4. So add 4 to the other side equals k. Alright, so is it right? We're going to go from this point, 1 across, 4 up. Is that right? So 4 up, 1 across, multiplies to give 4. So we can always have a wee check by looking at it. So that is our equation. Alright, that bit's pretty simple. Happy? Okay, your turn.